Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the fourth part of our virtual seminar series, The Art and Science of Practical Management, Core Skills and Le of, in Leadership and Management with Professor Joe Martin. Uh, my name is Dr. Matthew Clark, and I am the chair of the trainee advisory committee for the Royal College of Pathologists. Um, tonight, we're going to make a very prompt start because I know Joe's got a number of slides to get through. But just to remind you, um, we'd love to have some questions from you um, at the end of Joe's talk. So please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens. You can either ask the questions um, throughout Joe's talk or wait to the end to submit them. But we'd love to hear from you either way. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to hand straight over to Joe, whose tonight's talk is going to be on dealing with mistakes and complaints. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much, Matthew, and uh, welcome. Uh, to the seminar this evening. I'm going to um, share some slides with you and we're going to cover com complaints and uh, mistakes. Uh, and obviously this is not something that anyone wants to deal with, um, but it is something that you are very likely uh, to have to deal with. So we're going to cover complaints and mistakes. We're also going to cover your personal reaction and your leadership reaction. They're very different. So complaints range. They, you know, a, a sort of general moan. They always put me on the call at the weekend. Exam fees are too expensive. We get that regularly at the college. I do, I do appreciate it. And then he shouted at a nurse. So when a patient tells you that a doctor shouted at the nurse, which I've had um, as well, that's a sort of almost a formal different category. The complaints about the way you deal with complaints depends on what the context is. If it's a complaint made in the context of, you know, somebody complaining that the rotor is not fair, then I would strongly suggest that you can deal with that sort of thing through looking at the data. Look at the data, check up that it is fair, it isn't fair, and then deal with it. Similarly with exam fee, you know, exam fees are always an issue, subscriptions are always an issue. So the college has dealt with it by publishing the data of what we spend. And that really helps to, to, to help people understand the reasons behind things. Similarly, I've had uh, one part of the department complaining that the other department, uh, part of the department wasn't doing enough work. And you just publish the data and that actually helps show that actually everybody's working really hard and it 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 helps diffuse that particular complaint showing that it, it that it isn't fair and you have to do something about it then so transparency of data is always really helpful when you're dealing with complaints if it's a complaint about patient care if it's a complaint about behavior you must do it properly Look at your complaints policy, look at your grievance policy and your trust and follow it to the letter. In this case, as before, process is your friend. Don't delay doing an initial assessment and then following whatever process is apparent. It's really important for that to happen. What can be useful in the context of all complaints is to look at a, a source that I never thought I would ever refer you to, but here it is, it's the Parliamentary Ombudsman website. And this, is, this apl applies to virtually anything. So if you are complaining about something, you want, you want to know that you won't be punished, your care won't be compromised if you raise it. You want to know how to make the, make the complaint and be supported in it. And this happens if, if you're a trainee, if you're a consultant, if you're a patient, uh, if you're a member of staff, you want to know what's happening about it and you want to know the outcome and you want to felt, feel that it's been handled fairly and you want to know that the organisation has learned from that. So this is a really quite useful resource just to think about how you should view complaints from a from a from somebody who is making a complaints point of view it's difficult to make a complaint um when i when i've been doing various roles if a if a if a patient wrote to me i would always thank them for taking the time to 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 tell us about it about it because it, it can be quite 
daunting to do that and, and try and always get back to them. Some, some complaints, it is extraordinarily difficult to resolve. Um, and, and some, I know that there are some people who will consistently complain about things, um, and, but that, that is in the enormous and vast minority. So this is actually a, a very good framework. It helps you think about complaints from, from, the, from the complainant's point of view. Going to go on to mistakes. Mistakes roughly divide into mistakes of omission and mistakes of commission. So mistakes of omission, I made a uh, bad mistake when I was a houseman, when they had such things. Um, I had a patient come in, incredibly busy job as ever, and uh, you know, it's a one in two, et cetera, et cetera, all the excuses as to why I might have not done it. Uh, but I failed to, he was on warfarin and I failed to look up the result of his INR uh, that I'd taken the blood test on. And it was too high and he bled um, and had to be transfused. He was fine, but that was an act of omission. Mistakes of commission are where you actively make a mistake and they can be all sorts of different contexts. So it can be something as simple as a spelling mistake or it can be something where you've just gone a bit too far. Um, and it can be where you've actually made a mistake, you've made an error of judgment, which has harmed a patient. Um, and that can happen too. So certainly talking about the, the leadership teams virtually everywhere and your consultant colleagues, most of them will have made a mistake. Pathologists, human beings make a mistake. I made, I made one this evening. I sent the dog out in the garden um, with, a, with a covering on the wrong foot. Uh, he's got a cut on his paw and I, I put the cover on his right paw, not his left paw. So he came back in with a muddy cut again. So, you know, mistakes happen all the time. In healthcare, we're in a particularly difficult situation um, in the, that impact of our mistakes can have really terrifying consequences for patients. Grades of mistakes are also, it's the impact of that mistake is, is when we think about this. So the impact of this mistake, this is an act of commission uh, where these two have actively and deliberately taken paint out and then smeared it around. It has pretty gruesome consequences for the for the family, but nobody died. Um, and that's that's when we're talking about grading mistake. It's got a serious impact, but it's it's not um, a safety issue. It's not a, a death or serious injury issue. It may be, <laughs> it may be once, once the parents get home and discover that, uh, they may regard it slightly differently. It, but it's different to misdiagnosing or missing a cancer or putting a someone at harm through um, through making a, a, a wrong diagnosis, through missing a part of the slide, missing out a slide. Your initial reaction to somebody coming to you with a, with a mistake or your own mistake may be, oh my God, or if it's somebody else's mistake, you may be essentially die. I can't believe you've done that. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Um, etc. But you can't let that um, influence you. Your leadership reaction, your reaction as a leader is you will know this. You have to deal with the immediate situation. You must deal with the patient who's affected or the and, and very importantly, and the individual who's made, ostensibly made the mistake. Sometimes it's not always a mistake. If you're told about a mistake, sometimes it can be. You need to investigate, but you need that element of care. You need to care for the person who's made the mistake and the person affected by any mistakes, if there is one. Investigate. Make sure that you've got um, here, if you've got the, uh, make sure that you've made corrective actions, learn from them, and then do the paperwork um, associated with it. Your organisations will all have um, 
methods um, and protocols that you you uh, document, you date the incident, uh, you write down the actions that you've taken um, and you, you time, make sure that you write all the times down um, of the, the date, the time and the date the incident was discovered, your immediate reaction. Notebooks and logs are your best friends in all these uh, situations. Complaints, document what you did, document how you've done it, write the letters. Make sure that you keep a record of exactly what happens. It really helps when you're recalling uh, if you have to write a report on a particular incident. What you can't afford to do is to go around and tell the whole department, oh my God, you know, Dr. Shirley's made, me, made a mistake, you know, oh, it's awful. You know, I can't believe you did this, Shirley, you know, etc. Um, histopathologists always like looking at the very, very small detail. That's why I put the microscope in. But it's also, you've got to look at the bigger context of, of the mistake and, and why it was made and, that, and, and how that was made. Uh, you don't go rushing around the department and say, uh, oh my God, so-and-so has just missed a cancer. You know, I've seen a really bad one actually where, where uh, a particular clinical lead of a department on being made aware that somebody had made a mistake, then sent an email around the whole department saying, can you let me know of any mistakes made by X? Now, can you imagine how you would feel? And you didn't even tell the, the, the individual involved either. So he wrote around to all his colleagues saying, please let me know about any, any mistakes made by this doctor. Now, absolute no-no. You know, if you're going to review mistakes, you remove, you, you, you do it as an audit and you do it as, an, a, as a fair um, and equal process. So don't, don't do this in the heat of battle, do it in a calm and organized way. Absolutely important that it's an open culture. People make mistakes, we know it. We need to be able to tell each other um, what's happened. People need to be able to tell me if I've made a mistake. I make them the whole time. Lots of people have told me that I have made mistakes and it makes me feel bad, but I need them to tell me, otherwise I won't ever get any better. I'm gonna come back to the just culture because that's very important. You need to treat people fairly. I think that plays back to the example I gave earlier. And you need to have a, a, a culture where people are encouraged to report incidents and events. You also need to learn from them and the, the way you work needs to be informed by that. I would give you an example where a particular um, histopathology lab, there were uh, specimen mix-ups happen, happening. And it happened twice, and the same particular individual who'd been doing cut up was involved with a laboratory scientist on both occasions. On investigation, um, it transpired that the, the the consultant who was doing cut up was in a it was was always rushing, and it flout, it, it, it it flummoxed the the biomedical science, and sometimes they would label cassettes wrong wrongly or give the wrong cassette over. And they solved that issue of, of mistakes by just simply moving the <laughs> specimens out of reach of the consultants. So he couldn't actually get to them to, 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 to pro provoke this, this, this problem. So that, in, that was an informed system, but it, was, it prevented the mistakes in that way. So that was a learning from that particular setting. I talked about a just culture. The NHS has got this very good, um, if you're managing an issue, sometimes you, you want to, to know why and how you should deal with something. And these tests are actually very good. So most of us don't go out to do harm. But the first test in this sort of chain is was there an intention to cause harm? Did somebody deliberately do something? Well, actually, you know, if you if, if that's the beginning of the investigation, somebody said yes, 
I deliberately injected X with insulin, then that's straight police. Um, next one is, are there ind indications of substance abuse? Is somebody under the, does, does somebody have physical or, or mental ill health or substance abuse that might have affected their behavior? Third one is the foresight test. When you look forward, are there protocols, are there accepted ways of doing work that were not followed? Was it somebody, was it somebody that, that was this a, a routine protocol that somebody was trained in and that they'd, they were familiar with and they should have followed? Um, and did they deliberately depart from that protocol? So I gave the example um, there of, of a, uh, one of our admin staff um, put send away results rather than putting them in envelopes and posting them off, put them in a drawer. So there was months worth of delay on uh, results going out to a patient from one, one of our departments. And that was, a, that was a knowing departure from the protocol um, and they, uh, that was, that went down a disciplinary route for that reason. So if all those are, was there any intention to, to cause harm? No, no, no health problems, no foresight test problems. Um, would somebody else in the same situation, would you expect them to behave the same way in that setting? So if, if, if I miss a, a a bit of cancer on a biopsy, I would not expect my colleagues to do the same. Uh, and that's that's the substitution test. Um, you know, uh, if it's a trainee, are you properly supervised? Um, and then are there any significant mitigating circumstances? So at the moment, everybody's redeployed to different areas. Um, everybody's working at speed. So there may be pressures, workforce pressures, there may be working practice pressures, there may be a major incident going on that would mitigate the actions and the uh, mistake in that case. Now, the impact on the patient is not changed by those tests, but it helps you deal with the member of staff involved, or the members of staff involved, if it's a multiple event, fairly. And it's a very it's a very good way of, of, of systematically looking at what happens once there's been a, an incident or event. You must also uh, bear in mind, and this is a nice summary um, that I've summarised even further from the MDU, um, but there is a duty of candour. If there's a mistake or an impact on a patient, you have an, a duty to tell the patient. Um, the MDU um, talks about notifiable incidents, and that's where there's been a uh, change to the uh, an impact on the patient. So a repeat um, a repeat procedure or uh, a risk of injury uh, to that. I absolutely, if something's gone wrong, apologise. Absolutely apologise. It makes such a difference. Um, it really does make a difference. Uh, I had a, uh, when I was medical director, I had a patient come in and a, um, one of the consultants in neurology had been very brusque with him, very brusque to get, when he gave him a diagnosis. And he came in, he told me all about it. And I just said, I'm really sorry, it shouldn't have happened. Um, you know, it was clearly, it was clearly distressing and I, I can only apologise. I can't put it right, but I can speak with my colleague and it shouldn't have happened. And that's the sort of approach that patients really appreciate. Um, don't, don't try and cover, cover up stuff. Don't try and excuse stuff. If, if you know something's gone wrong as a, as a patient, um, patients are very forgiving um, in general and keep re written records. So um, duty of candour, always, always tell, tell the patient. There are some very helpful guides in raising concerns uh, in, on our pathology website, on the RCPATH ones. There's the professional, for the profession, 
um, and there's under the patient safety and quality one there's some performance review guides and invited service review um, facilities as well and they'll give a, a very helpful uh, set of, of guidelines for conducting um, audit um, audits uh, looking at um, investigate investigative audits as well and there's some classifications of errors in histopathology um, as well as um, performance review guides for other disciplines as well so I would commend that that resource to you it's actually very helpful we've also got patient safety bulletins please make use of those this is part of the learning and the learning culture it's very important that we share mistakes and people who have have put these up and on the right hand side of the screen as you look at it you'll see the the slightly blue bluer one um, and these we have a template where people can share their own um, mistakes and learning and this is really important uh, again to share with the community it was interesting when we first started these several members of the honorary officers um, I sent them around a draft and several of them said, yes, I'll, we did that. Uh, and quite a few of the incidents had been repeated across many organisations and that's a real tragedy. So learning from incidents and mistakes is so important. Thank you. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to take some questions. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, another excellent talk and um, a really important topic to address, really, and um, something I'm really passionate about as well. So thank you very much for speaking about that. Um, so I'd now like to open it up to questions. Um, I can see we've had a few coming through already. Um, so the first one, Joe, um, do you believe in a no blame culture? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so uh, you have to have a, a situation of no blame, as I said before, if immediately you go, oh, it's your fault, I can't believe you've done that. Um, look at the just culture. There is a, there, I mean, un underlying it, people need to be held to account. So if I've messed up, I need to be held to, a, held to account for that. Um, but that's very different from blaming. Mm -hmm. You know, if I continue to make the same mistake, then something needs to be done about it. Um, but if I make the mistake once, um, tell me about it. Don't blame, blame, and sh don't shame and blame. Um, that doesn't help. Uh, I think people start to cover up stuff otherwise. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I, as you know, I've done quite a bit of work with the trainees around this and things. And you're trying to mm -hmm. foster a, an environment where people feel safe to talk about these things. And anything where you're pointing the finger. Um, we've just got to open ourselves up and say, look, any, um, a mistake can happen to anybody, anybody at all. Yeah. And, and does, all the time. Exactly. And um, so we've just got to be open about it. And like you say, the key word was honest as well and come yeah. forward. And the benefit to everybody in seeing those mistakes is crucial because although it's not happened to you, it, learning about that mistake may help other people prevent it from happening to them as well. So it's really important. Yeah. I, it was it was interesting. I wrote I wrote about mistakes and and personal error because it makes you feel really ashamed when you when you mess up something, mm. um, and that's support from so. So I wrote about that in one of the bulletins, um, and I had a young doctor come up and say, actually, it made me feel a bit better. Mm. I made a mistake and it made me feel a bit better, and it does. Our our colleagues are very supportive. Yeah. Um, maybe it, it may make you feel shameful but other people have been through that as well um I, and quite I think a that's, lot. that's a really good point joe because one of the things i wanted to ask you about was how you know how do you stop these mistakes that have, you're, you know they often hang around you and you think about them and so i went to a henry marsh talk a few years ago and he made this very poignant statement of saying that you know every doctor has a almost a graveyard in their mind that every so often they periodically go through and just sit down and reflect on things that have happened throughout yeah. their career and things and i think yeah. the way you can actually make a difference to other people in preventing them from making that same mistake can actually be almost a sort of therapeutic part of that process i suppose yeah yeah um, so we've got another question now from stella um as a less senior member of the department how would you approach a consultant who is very sensitive to his or her mistakes and prefers to gloss over especially if the mistakes are not dramatic for patients but for example are important for the educational point of view um, so uh, the the politics and the power politics around this are 
absolutely understand it's really difficult. Um, I think probably letting them know uh, if you if you if you feel that you can. Um, it, there are certain tactful ways to do it, and there are certain untactful ways. <laughs> oh, you've messed up again, Doctor So and So. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, or you know, or oh, this is really interesting because we were just taught that you know that that this particular thing was quite helpful or oh i found this really good review article on x mm. um you know uh, so i've i've copied it around the department that's another way of, of doing it and just hope that hope they read it and hope they realize um the other thing is if it's pernicious speak to your educational supervisor okay. um and they 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 will have all your head of department and just have a have a word um if there's any suggestion that there's any patient care implications or a quality issue, absolutely report it. If it's a if it's a nuanced thing, that's fine. But if there's anything patient quality, always always report it. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. And um, we've got another question from Joe. Thank you. Um, how do you rationalise the risk and worry that one day you will indeed make a mistake, especially in the current culture of stress and anxiety, when you might be worrying about things more? Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, and you do. And you and, and it's especially true after you make a mistake, you get it knocks your confidence. Mm. Um, all doctors, everything we do is around making judgments and uh, reducing risk. Um, but you are using your professional judgment to do that. You are trained to do it. Mm. You are trained very well to do it. Uh, we know that the, the training program is very good. Um, we've got some objective evidence. I'm not just saying that. Um, it does fit you fit you for practice. Um, we know some pathologists very, very, very rarely get their confidence knocked and, and can't make a decision on anything. Um, but you just have to, you know, a patient's waiting for a decision. Make your make your make your best efforts to make a good good decision, good diagnosis. Um, it'll be okay. Uh, you will occasionally miss stuff, um, but tell your colleagues, work with them. Don't don't get don't get tied up in knots on it. I suppose that whole culture again, like you say about the patient safety bulletins, Joe, where one was published and everybody said, "Well, that's happened to me," or "I know about that." Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point of this: is that if you talk about it and are open about it, you'll see that you're not on your own, and that is the yeah. same happen to other people as well. So. Yeah, and nobody uh, is perfect. Hmm. Exactly. Um, another question from Angela. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, having trained overseas, I find that the UK focuses more on the individual when a mistake is made and not on the underpinning process when compared with elsewhere. To what extent should we look at the process involved rather than just holding the individual to account without looking at the reasons underpinning an error? And how do we balance accountability with understanding the multifactorial process that leads to um, error? Well, that's, uh, that's the basis of that just culture um, flowchart. If you read the Just Culture um, document, it's actually very good, and it's exactly around that. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 and sometimes when you make a mistake, you can feel like you're being blamed as well, even if, and, and so be sensitive that when you're dealing with other people who have made mistakes, mm -hmm. um, they're going to be feeling rubbish, they're going to be feeling awful, mm -hmm. and anything you say to them, you know, be supportive, be supportive of them. Yeah. And that, that helps, you know, how you deal with somebody else's mistake can feel very different when you're, you know, if you've made a mistake, somebody says, oh, what did you think about that? It can feel like <clears throat> at the time. So just culture system when you're investigating, but just be sensitive to, to how awful it feels. The other thing is culturally people different, deal with it very, very differently. Mm -hmm. So some people will absolutely express despair at having made a mistake other people will shut will will shut down mm. um and so don't judge people on how they react if you say you know i'm i'm sorry to have to tell you but you know i need you to review a case because we think there's a discrepancy yeah. the other thing if you would if you, the radiologists are better at doing this they use the word discrepancy rather than error or mistake mm -hmm. so discrepancy is a less judgmental term yeah um still you know it's a mistake but 
Um, so, you know, I think there's a discrepancy in this. Be grateful if you could review it. Um, you know, if somebody immediately shuts down, it, 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 they might, you know, they're probably still really feeling it. Everybody will handle things like this in a different way. And a, a little, like you say, a little bit of empathy, Joe, about what it's like in, you know, in the, the reverse situation, I think goes a long way with this, I suppose, as well, huge, doesn't it? Huge. Um, another question, in the laboratory, sometimes biomedical scientists may find it difficult to reveal errors to the medical consultants in the same department because they're concerned that their views will not be accepted. What's your view on that, Joe? Uh, Non-hierarchical, we're all on the same team. It's really important, you know, it, we are on the same team. And that's a question of, of how you deal with people yeah. as well. Um, I've been corrected by biomedical scientists quite, quite a lot and quite rightly, um, you know. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. Um, what advice would you do you have for dealing with a trainee who has made an acceptable diagnostic error in a challenging case, for example, and stopping it destroying their confidence for future reporting? Um, so again, again, it's it's you know it happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you almost learn more from your mistakes than you do from getting something right. Absolutely. Um, and and you know, uh, we as I should say, learning learning that you're human and that you do make a mistake is is even unacceptable errors. People do make them. Mm most of our department you know most of our consultants have made errors that they bitterly regret um mm. it does he make you more careful uh, which is not always a bad thing um and we know that some people make more errors in certain circumstances than others so pressure of work we know i had one colleague who who i know their error rate went up when they were reporting too much mm. uh, other people will you know, continue to, to churn through masses of work and their error rate, they may miss miss stuff on, on different occasions. So I suppose for trainees as well, the importance of doing a bit of independent reporting is quite important at this in their, in their training process as well, really, to get that sort of confidence in your own interpretation and actually pressing that authorised button for those cases it, as well. It's quite a, it's quite a, it's quite a um, so I had a consultant who wouldn't look at anything I wrote after I passed by part one. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a, you know, I had to, I, I'd literally have to, to, to say, no, I need you to look at this one. And mm. so you'd have a pile of stuff and he, you'd pass your part one. Ooh. And that was a general part one. It was terrifying. <laughs> it, you know, it, it made you focus. Uh, I wouldn't advocate that, but no. the supervised graded training, build your confidence by getting, you know, you're, you're very bright, you're very well trained, you know what you, you know, largely you know what you're doing, you know in a normal appendix, you know a normal colon biopsy, just, you know, you're okay. Yeah, thanks Jo. Um, another question, how do you deal with a member of staff who has made a mistake but does not take responsibility for their actions? Really hard. Genetic or continually blaming others? Yeah, that's really hard. So I actually ask it, um, I quite often ask at interview, what was your last mistake? And some people will say, I can't recall having made one. Mm. And that's a drop dead question for me, I'm afraid. Mm. Um, not always for the rest of the panel, but yeah. Um, so taking responsibility for stuff is one of the key, you, you, you know, you have to. Um, we all learn, we all make mistakes. If somebody says it's not my, my fault, you know, I've had, it, I've had interview questions where people have said, well, there was a mistake, but it wasn't my fault. And you think, you know, uh, no, um, I'm afraid that is, you know, if it's somebody who is blaming others, um, others may take umbrage at that one and that can spiral out of control yeah. uh, if it's not handled carefully. Um, but ask them to write a reflective note. So if you're senior to them, you can ask them to write a reflective note for their appraisal. And sometimes that will put around coaching can help also thanks joe thank you um a couple more questions if that's okay um how responsive do you think the college is generally to complaints uh, could they do more oh yeah i mean you, on on complaints you can always do more so i do get complaints i've had a uh, i've had uh, a complaint about the agm uh so far 
uh, and I dealt with that by writing straight back, explaining what had happened, and then I phoned up the person um, who'd raised the issue and spoke with them about it. Um, yes, occasionally we do, we, 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 we don't get it right. Um, and some, again, all organisations will occasionally get slightly um, procedural responses sent out from someone in the organisation and that's not helpful, yeah. you know. Well, that's lovely, Joe. I think we'll have to leave it there for tonight. Um, thank you ever so much for another amazing talk and um, a really good set of question, question and answers. And thank you very much to all the delegates for, um, for providing, again, another great set of questions. I'm sorry, again, we haven't been able to get through them all. Um, please remember, if you'd like to see the presentations again that Joe's been giving, they are featuring up on the website now. So please um, pop along and have a look at them up there. Um, and thank you very much again to Joe and to the Royal College team for putting on these um, seminars for us. And um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you again next week, same time, for Joe's talk on dealing with the unpleasant expecto patronum. Yes, so thank time. you very much indeed. And may all your mistakes be terribly little ones. Thanks, Joe. Goodbye, Thank everyone. You.